बहुत मेरी प्रिय थी इसके लिए माँ की माँ की माँ की तो टू ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेल्व लिव आस केम टू मी ना फिर आर्ट इफ यू वांट टू यूज़ दिस पासेज टू इंकोरेज यू नॉट टू रन अवे अल्लाह लव यू नो यू यू नॉट रन अवे Are we together? I say I use as an introduction to encourage you not to run away because you are in the right place, where you receive the undiluted word of God that is able to build you up unto salvation. You know, one day Jesus had a large crowd. The Bible says he fed five thousand people. Is it around five thousand? That's a large crowd. So Jesus was the crowd fuller. He had anointing to pull crowd. But you know what Jesus was doing mainly was 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 with the crowd. He was healing them, isn't it? He was giving them bread to eat. So Jesus was basically do two things that attracted crowd. One he was healing them of their sicknesses. You know, healing ministry attacks what crowd, and then he added something more than healing. He begins to give what food. Supposing we order, which one is your favorite restaurant? Someone say aroma. Someone say dado. Supposing we say dado today after service, there should be a package for everybody in the church. Amen. <laughs> if you are not serious, <laughs> I will say after every Sunday service, just stand by the gate and be given takeaway of what rice with pepper chicken. I tell you, we are going to fill this place in one month. You agree? <laughs> It's a two weeks. <laughs> Because the news will fly. The Kada Church is a caring church. Go ahead, boss. One day we'll try it and see. And you are the one that will sponsor it. <laughs> Where is that? Isn't it? You just come and say this Sunday that prophecy that Pastor said, I will sponsor it. <laughs> I say, what is the average attendance? They say, okay, 150. So, okay, aroma package 150. <laughs> Hallelujah! So Jesus began to give food. Food, bread and fish. And the Bible said they were looking for him to make him what king. He did miracles. No one looked for him to give him, to make him king, until he provided what food. And there was a large multitude. I believe there were double the multitude that he fed. A large crowd gathered, and that night or that evening, Jesus changed his message. You know the message he started preaching. Except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no life in yourself. And they were, okay, they are trying to understand what is this message all about. And he ended the message like that. The message that day is that you should eat his flesh. <laughs> What kind of message like that? And that day, Jesus didn't do miracle of what? He didn't multiply. He has the power to multiply, but he decided not to multiply anything. He didn't give them food. And, it, and the Bible says, after the message, there was rumor around them, and they said, "This is a word. This is a hard saying. Who can what hear it?" Pull away from thousands 
the church begins to deplete. And you know, that was the beginning of the downturn of Jesus' ministry. His ministry began to, I mean in the fiscal, his ministry began to what? No die. The Bible said at one point, Jesus called for a meeting and there were only 12 of the disciples. From 5,000 to 12. Oh my God. From 5,000 to 12. Because the message has what? Change from entertainment and personal development to eat my word flesh and drink my blood. They say it is a hard thing and they run away. They run away and Jesus look at the top and say, will you too run away? In other words, Jesus was willing to start from what? You know, when Jesus started the disciple, he started with three, isn't it? He was willing to start from the beginning again. And after that event, you know, he went to the cross, isn't it? Well, before he went to the cross, he said, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and dies, it remains what? Alone. Except the corn of wheat. And if these people have just abandoned him and stopped coming to his church or to his meetings, that would have been enough. But they stood Jesus on the podium. And they said, choose between Jesus and Barabbas. That same crowd that were healed. That same crowd that ate bread. Said, give us what? Barabbas. Now Jesus will be looking at their faces. When you are eating fish, Got your mouth, eat fish. You are eating fish. You are saying Jesus is the king, is the Messiah. But now I told you the undiluted word of God. You are saying what? Crucify him. The same crowd that said we want you to be our king because you gave us bread. That same crowd begin to say, Crucify him! Crucify him! While I was meditating on the message, I know well, mostly why we have in the church is entertainment. To steer our emotions. We may call them praise and worship, isn't it? But our emotions are stirred up. Sometimes I am not excited when we worship and our emotions are stirred up. Because I watch a clip. You know Michael Jackson? Have you watched his clip? You see the reaction among the people. There was an instance that a lady just started shouting, Michael! Michael! And she fell down and died. You will see tears. Tears and convulsion when Michael Jackson is ministry. Of late is what Barack Obama. When he speaks, you see people in tears weeping. What kind of anointing is that one? It's not enough to steer the emotion. It's not enough to entertain people to teach them the principle of success. There is nothing wrong with entertainment. I believe there should be some entertainment in the church. So that we are happy with them. And I think the church should be able to teach us how to make money. To teach us principles of honor. To teach us principles of success. There's no problem in teaching seven steps to a very true. There's nothing wrong with it. But if that becomes the only thing Jesus said, what shall he profit a man to gain the whole world 
Because of our time, I will not go into the details of what I want so that I will be able to finish this. But all I'm trying to say is that it's very difficult for us pastors to teach you the word of God because we are afraid we will lose you. Are we together? It's very difficult for us pastors to stand on the pulpit and teach you the word of God because we are afraid we are going to what? Lose you. When we teach you the truth, you will say, Kai, I would rather go to a place where they allow me to do whatever I want to do. Say, this, this church is too strict, isn't it? Say, this pastor is too strict. I would rather go to a place where they will allow me to do whatever I want to do. In this church, we follow you like monitoring spirit. Some of you are observing your life, your adultery, your fornication, your corruption in the office. We are following you as soon as we have evidence. We we'll put you on church's feet. As soon as we have what? Tangible evidence. We announce it on the pulpit and put you on top display. Hallelujah. We are monitoring you. <laughs> we are monitoring you. Because the Spirit says, I know your word works except you repent we are monitoring you so wherever you go that God wants to say God, if it's not even God it's Dr. Lema if not for Dr. Lema I would have done this. <laughs> I say even if it's that way as long as it will keep you in the path of righteousness I'm satisfied it's difficult for us pastors to teach you to teach you the truth because most of you have itching ears. The Bible said a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will gather to themselves teachers having itching ears. It's difficult for us. RCC, I want people that will come here. Let them be people who want to serve God. Honestly speaking. All the obstacles we are putting is to weed, is to weed those who are not serious. Because honestly speaking, I don't want to have one member that will end in hell. What did I say? I don't want one member that will end in hell. So we put obstacles, obstacles that will only allow those who are determined. Because the road is narrow. If your vision is not heaven, probably you are in the wrong place. But I want to plead and beg you. I'm begging you. Let us have God in truth together. Let not the church be a place where we just come and discuss frivolities. They seek for the kingdom of God and other things shall be added unto you. First John chapter 1 verse 8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. How many of you believe this verse? Say hallelujah. I mean, if you don't believe it, say Amen. Okay, we're together, isn't it? Because some people, whatever you say, they will say what? They will say Amen. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you. Now, before I digress the statement, you all know why I bring it up as one of the doctrines of demons 
or one of the verses that the devil is using to defeat believers. Because if you've been a Christian, you realize that many people have caught this verse and say to themselves, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves as an excuse to live in sin. Have you heard anybody say that? Yeah? I remember I was went to a church and I preached about fornication. Is it wrong to finish to teach about fornication? Is it wrong? This is zero. And after the message, someone met me. As I should stop preaching about fornication. Is fornication the only thing? He said, stop disturbing people about fornication. Now, he told me, look at your life. From morning to evening, didn't you commit sin? I begin to think, okay, did I commit sin? Did I not commit sin? He said, didn't you look at one girl like that? Didn't you exaggerate the story? So we are all sinners. So if we are all sinners, and there is no big sin, there is no small sin. So why are you telling people about fornication? And the person is a pastor. Doctrine of demons are derivatives from scripture that are distorted and misapplied. Give me Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Is a corroboration of this verse that says, For all of what? And the people can use that verse to justify the sin they are committing. They say, All of what? All of sin. So, what is the problem? So, why are you stopping us about sin? We, drink, we are drinking sin, we are eating sin every day. And I tell you, the devil used that to box people. And make them feel happy about your sin. And make them, instead of repenting, the devil will make them to justify their action. And say, all our sin now, what is the big deal? After all, God will forgive us. Say, so let's just do it. You know, God is a merciful God. God understands He will forgive us. After all, we are sinners, isn't it? You know, we are sinners. Every day you are calling yourself what? I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, and you're justifying your sin is the doctrine of demons. First John chapter 3 verse 8, because I want you to understand something quickly, then we will close. In chapter 1 verse 8, it says we have all sinned. And in fact, the scriptures say, if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And that is, when I heard in chapter 1. Okay, let's go back there. He said, he that committed sin is of the devil. The same man in the same book. He that committed sin is of the what? Of the devil. So if what he said there, means that we are just living and committing sins, it means we are of the devil. Are we of the devil or of God? For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the work of the devil. What is the work of the devil? Sin. Next verse. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Do you see a contradiction there? He opened chapter 1 and he said, We are all sinners. And in this verse he said, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. This one verse that has held my neck for 10 years, I said, God, what do you mean that whoever is born of God does not commit sin? What is sin? Isn't it? I said, God, what do you mean? By saying, whosoever. Now, let me ask a question. How many of you are born of God? Please raise your hand. I'm marking you so that if I make an altar call, 
He will come and give you a life to Jesus for the service end. <laughs> Hallelujah. So how many of you have committed sin? Raise your hand. You are born of God and you have committed sin. Man of God, you have never committed sin. committed many sins too. You will see as if there is a paradox, there is a confusion in the verses because they seem to contradict themselves. But let me tell you something. If you don't understand scriptures, the devil will deceive you. But he now went ahead in First John chapter five verse sixteen. First John chapter five verse sixteen. So if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask him and he shall have life. Give me the next verse seventeen. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. You know, people in their relationship have tried to help us understand Hebrew terminology. When it comes to love, I think anyone of you here knows that there are three types of love, isn't it? If you know, you just say hallelujah. Because there is agape, there is philo, and there is eros. But in the Bible, they are all called what? Love. Is when you go to the original text that you begin to see that it separates them. But English Bible, all where love is mentioned, you will see what love. But when you go to the Hebrew Bible, when they are referring to God's kind of love, they will put the word agape. The same thing, if you go to the Hebrew Bible, you discover that they have different terminologies for things. This verse makes it very clear that all unrighteousness is sin. But he said what? But there is a sin not unto death. You know that word? Sin is sin. But there are two types of sin. Now some of you say, ah, I know I'm trading on I'm working as it's, uh, I'm working on water but God will help me, those tongues will not carry me. Because someone will just go, we are online. There are people who are watching all over the world. I tell you, there are people from UK, America, that are who put this service. Someone will just, just speak this statement that I said, that is. <laughs> but whether you like, people will misunderstand you. Even Jesus was what? Misunderstood. So there are two types of things. There is a sin that leads to death, and there is a sin that does not lead to death. By the time until you understand that passage we read back, I say you do not commit sin, then we'll move together. There is a general concept of sin that is called transgression. Transgression means to go astray. Now when you read the Hebrew Bible, when they discuss general sin, they use the word avera. Avera. Avera means what? You have what? Transgress. So English Bible will, rule, will use sin for all of them. But when you go to the original, you see somewhere the word there is what? Avera. Avera means a general sin. And general, general sin means that word. It talks about all kinds of things are lumped together and are called what? Transgression. And the word transgression actually means you have gone astray. I bet that means what? Gone astray. Transgress. This is the path where you have transgressed. Romans 14.23. Talk about it. Romans 14.23. And look at this passage. He that doubted is damned if he eats 
because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. So if someone confronts you and says you have sinned from morning to now, it's likely what? Correct. Because anything that is not of faith is what? Of sin. And sometimes God will ask you to go and pray for somebody, but your faith is what? Weak. Then you say, God, God save you. What have you committed? You have committed sin. Committed sin. Anything that is not of it. Anything you do that you doubt. While you are doing it, you are having some doubt. Or let me say reasonable doubt. Once you go ahead and do it or not to do it, you have committed sin. And the one that is even more clear is in James chapter 4, verse 17. James 4, 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth the good to do, and do it, it not, it is what? Sin to him. Hallelujah. Suppose someone come and say, please help me with 5,000. And he said, I don't have 5,000. If I don't have a CC marker with me. You forgot to tell him that what? I don't have CC with me. Even though you don't have CC with you. We have CC in the what? In the account. And I don't have anything, no. You have lied. And you have not helped him. Because you are supposed to say, I only have money in my bank. You say, don't worry, take the account number. <laughs> uh, don't worry, there's ATM close by. Please help me. So when you look at things in this context, anyone that knows the good he ought to do and do it is not, is what? Sin. Now let me take one verse. First John 5.17 Okay, we'll study this. Isaiah 53.6 All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every man to his own way. And the Lord had what? Laid on him the iniquity of us all. So all of us have gone astray. There is no single human being on earth that would stand and say, I am perfect before God. No, not one. All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So the devil will use all these verses to tell you, well, what is there since we are all sinning and we will keep sinning. Let's just what continue what? Sinning. The prince of demons. And the devil can only do that because of your ignorance of the word of God. And understanding as we have read in 1 John 35 verse 17, he said, All unrighteousness is sin, but there is a sin that does not lead to death. And when you take scriptures, you will discover that sins are divided into two. In the Hebrew, they use the word tisha. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we, what? Willfully sin. That is to say, it is possible to willfully sin, and it is possible to sin on what? Willfully. Is this one in your Bible? If we sin willfully. It means that we can sin on what? On willfully. After we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. And that sin, the Hebrew Bible, they always put it as Tesha. And Tesha means rebellion. Rebellion. You know rebellion? You can't do something by mistake and it's called what? Rebellion. 
rebellion is that you know you are wrong but you justify it and keep doing it that's rebellion and that kind of sin is called patience and that was the that was the sin that he was referring when he said what anyone that commits sin belongs to the what to the devil anyone that committed patience you know the word you sin willfully you know it is sin but you are enjoying it you keep doing it pastors are preaching to you make your ways right stop the corruption the stealing and the lying stop the fornication and the adultery but there is benefit you are driving in it that is more important to you than the love of God you love your sin more than you love God so you persevere in it and you keep telling this is my weakness it's not your weakness it's your foolishness Fisher! the Bible said that is why that person said that what that person said there is a sin that leads to death what is a sin that leads to death are we together Now this message is like uh, you must drink my blood isn't it but keep on drinking the blood because there is power in it the church will not grow until when we come we discuss scripture and bible that we begin to do that the church will not grow we will not move from milk to the meat of the word of god and i'm telling the minister this morning i have determined to preach meat in this place. And I know you will not run away in Jesus name. <laughs> And many people in the city who are interested in meat who have been on milk for so long and their life is empty, they begin to say there is meat in this place. When we started our inaugural service, remember the prophet of one came. He said this is a place of meat. The Lord told him that this is a place for meat. So we'll give him milk once in a while. Milk will just be the appetizer. But the main course will be what? Meat. How many have enjoyed the meat? You want milk next Sunday? <laughs> Hallelujah. So a thing that leads to death is a willful thing. So any time you commit a sin willfully you belong to the devil. Why would say anyone who committed sin belongs to the word devil. The sin there was special rebellion. And that passage I did like to it if we sin willfully there remained no more sacrifice. The sacrifice is not there for you because the bible said in another place that you are crucifying the son of man again for the second time now there is a sin also that is called chatter now i went to a program in jos and someone saying that sin means missing the mark how many of you have heard that statement raise your hand i want to know if i have bible scholars here they say sin is just missing the mark What's your program? He says, sin is just missing the mark. So what are you why is it is just missing the mark? This person is this, a, a great one deceiver. Because chatter is a type of thing. And missing the mark, the concept is that you have an archer who is trying to hit his bow at the middle. He is trying to hit the middle, but he didn't get it. Do you get the difference? It's someone who is striving to be holy. But sometimes he stumbles. It's not willful. That thing is called chatter. Missing the mark. You are trying to get 100%. But you end up getting 80%. In fact, when you get 80%, you will not be happy, isn't it? Ah! You remember David? With Paul. 
Bible says Saul was lying down and he went and caught what? The hem of his garment. And the Bible said later it what? Smote him. Why? Because the Bible says, touch not my what? Anointed. But he tried by not killing him. But he still what? Cut his clothes. Even cutting his clothes was wrong. He cut the clothes of a king. It's even wrong. And the Bible says he had smut him. This is what? Cheta. And he feel wrong in his heart. But that kind of a thing. And that's what the pastor is I'm beginning to give you all. That kind of thing. None of us can be free from it. We make mistakes. We are human beings. Sometimes you lose your temper, isn't it? But after it, that is the regret. And then you say, God, I'm sorry. If it's your wife, you say, my wife, I'm sorry. You know, I just lost my temper. Psalm 90 verse 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins are a light on your countenance. Secret sins. So sometimes you sin, you don't even know you are what? Sinning. That's when they say, have you sinned from morning to evening? And you say, Kai, I checked and I didn't sin. <laughs> God will be laughing in his heart. Because your secret sin is before him. Psalm 19, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was shepherd in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive. So here is the meaning. Anyone who sin willfully and persistently, because rebellion is not just an act. Rebellion is that you commit a sin. And you commit it again. And you commit it again. And God will send the servant of God, the way I'm telling you, I'll be preaching. You live your sinful life and come to God. You just be sitting there. She be gani bani. You send me me ki. You send me send me 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 mutani skate kiba. Why she kawe? Rebellion. The body not the wood. You know why you're preaching? There are some people are saying. The body not the wood. The body, body not the wood. Uh, and then some who are stealing, who are very corruption, they were saying, man must work. Man must what? Work. Okay. I'm a child in Chiba. But I'm a child in Chiba. A <laughs> man is doing corruption. Does it? You are preaching. But I'm a child in Chiba. God just have to understand. You are laughing. This is rebellion. And I tell you, the hell under you is being heated ten times. God is waiting for your cup to be full. You know, someone was telling me, he has been committing sin and is getting away with it. He's so smart. You know, you just do this, do this, you get away with it, you do this, you do this, you get away with it. Say, I'm smart. I think I will always, I will always get away with it. The Bible says your sin will find you what? Out. But there is something that is called the cup of God's grace and mercy. You are doing it, it is dropping into the cup. Dropping into the cup. When the cup is full, The way they will catch you, they will throw you into jail. Your life will be miserable. 
In fact, if God starts punishing you on that, praise God. What did I say? If God started punishing you on that, yay, it's great. Some of you, if God starts punishing you now, it's the grace of God. It's big grace. It's because of the prayer we are praying for you that they will catch you and lock you up and flog you. That that smartness you are doing, you are doing, you will get pregnant. In fact, you you will be drinking family planning, you will still get pregnant. You will get HIV. Because your cup is full. But that is even great. Because by the time they punish you, you know what Paul says to you? He says, I will hand over your body to the devil. That's what it means. Then they will panavit you. You go and catch one cancer like this. And then in the sick bed. Or your money will just vanish. You go and do one deal. Everything will go. And then you just, then you are, you start coming to church. Isn't it? Because God has panel with you. This is even good for you. Some will not even have a chance. Some will not even have what? Chance. I had a story of, of, of a member of one choir like this. She always stands on the pulpit and teach and preach, you know, and, and sing. Very anointed. Everybody thought she's correct. But then she, she has allowed fornication into her life. She would sneak. Go and meet her boyfriend and commit fornication. In fact, she would travel, though. leave the town and travel. With all these accidents, someone is traveling to Lagos. To commit fornication. Hey! Travel, you enter motto. Going to commit fornication. When you know there are demon spirits on the road waiting for you. But you have accident and you escape. You are caught. One day she went and finished it. She was coming on her way back. She had an accident and died. Straight to hell. That's why I'm saying, if God begins to bang a bit you here, it's messy. And some of you, your cup is about to finish. About to feel. And you think you are smart. Today in our devotion, I was saying, we are looking about wisdom, but the fear of God is the beginning of all. Wisdom. What does it mean to fear God? To disobey His command. If God says adultery is sin, say, God says it is sin. I might suffer consequences now. But the consequences I will suffer for keeping God, for obeying God, is far better than the consequences I will suffer for being rebellious to God. So you cannot sit down there and begin to say, I'll give somebody an opportunity today. The rich man, they said, you have the prophet. Some of us have decided to be those prophets that will be telling you the truth until you get it. But some of you, your head is strong like coconut. Strong like what? Coconut. Some of you have coconut head. You'll be preaching, preaching, begging, admonishing you to stop your life of sin. You will leave this place. The following week, we just hear that. You did it again. You did it again. I cannot stop doing it. You cannot stop that. I'm going to wish that you would see the hell that I saw. I've seen hell, 2012. To the gate of hell. So you see it. Because if you see it and you come back, that same thing they say you commit, you say, I know go commit that. I tell you, you say what? I know go commit that. <laughs> you say, I know go commit that. Hallelujah. Guys, I want to take a one prayer point. 
on Friday we were praying and the Lord said many of our members are undergoing you know I saw on Friday while we were having in the prayer band what's on my feet just a prayer point then we pray I saw members of this church climbing a mountain the mountain of righteousness the mountain of Zion they are making steady progress steady progress and all of a sudden I saw the devil was pouring something slimy on the mountain something slippery on the mountain and then some will come and step it they have reached a height then whoosh, I will see them at the bottom again members of our city climbing on the mountain of holiness but the devil will be poor those things are temptation slippery slippery things and when they step on it they are back at it. That's, that's the journey of many. They, will, they, will, they, are, they are about to reach the peak. Then somewhere there, just throw something slippery. Because they are not careful. When they step it, they are at the foot. Okay. Want to pray for people like that? That their spiritual life is up and down. Today you are holy. The next day you are in sin. And say, Father, strength for the journey. Strength to climb the mountain of righteousness. Prayer the church and say, Father, help our members against the wiles of the enemy. Against the wiles of the enemy. Temptations that have bedeviling them. They are not praying RCC. I know sometimes the word comes like this. And then you are so weak to pray. But please just say something even if in your heart. Pray for members of us. Strength for the journey. Strength never to give up. It is difficult terrain. The road is narrow. People are falling. People cannot go up. But I want you to pray and say, Father, give us strength. We cannot be up today and down tomorrow. Let us keep climbing until we reach the peak of the mountain. Oh Father, I pray for your people. Strength for the journey. 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 For the journey. In the name of Jesus. Strength for the journey. Let us pray our point. Begin to rebuke the enemy. So the devil. Leave the people alone. Let them walk with God. Leave the people alone. Let them make giant steps up. Let them make giant steps up. In the name of Jesus, the arms of the enemy is broken. In the name of Jesus, the power of the devil is broken. The eyes that he has blinded, I command them to open now. In the name of Jesus, the chains he has bind them in sin, I command those chains to lose. In the name of Jesus. You know, some are bound by poverty, lack of job, no money. So they beat their hands into corruption. Some are even sleeping with men because of money. You are going to pray and say, Father, the spirit of lack, I come against it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of lack that the enemy is using to tempt the people. I come against the spirit of lack. Begin to produce opportunity for them. Let their businesses begin to prosper. Let their promotions that have been withheld be released to them. Business ideas. Let it locate them. Let their businesses flourish. Every spirit of poverty that have been the source of temptation against the people of God who come against you in the name of Jesus. Wisdom. Wisdom to do something with the hands. Wisdom to do something with the hands. Wisdom to prosper. The devil is using that as a sign to make people to hold down. Therefore, you mountain of poverty will come against you. You mountain of lack will come against you in the name of Jesus. Who are 
blessing of a wife and husband. And the devil is using that to trap them in fornication and adultery. You are going to pray. Whoever is trusting God for a home, God will send relief in the name of Jesus. You are going to pray now. Their partners, they will locate them. Their partners, they will locate them. In the name of Jesus, go oh, for open their eyes. If their eyes are closed, if they cannot see the gift because the package is not good, but I let their eyes be open. Let them know that it is your purpose. Let them know that it is your will. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray for marriages. There are people that their marriages is a pain, and that is slowing their progress in the faith. You are going to pray every sick home, every sick family. They will enjoy peace. Peace now. Let every family begin to enjoy peace. Let every family begin to enjoy peace. Let every runaway husband, let it come back. Let every runaway wife, let her come back in the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy is using to make the road slippery will come against it in the name of Jesus. Finally, we are going to pray for sicknesses. Sickness are tied to the family. Sickness of infertility. Lost bank count. Lost teeth. Lack of erection. All this kind of thing that is bringing this harmony in the home. We pray today. Today is your day for a miracle. God. Every infertile couple. Let them receive fertility. Every lost bank count. Because no my bank count. Every lack of ovulation. Begin to ovulate now. Every tube that is blocked. I command you open now. In the name that is above every name. Let's pray for all other sicknesses and diseases. That have been a reproach in your life. God is taking it out now. God is taking it out now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, we pray and say, Father, Father, help me to continue the race to the end. Let me not give up on the way. Let me not be carried away. But let me follow you through. Once you see me in a estimate, as you round up. Thank you with all your heart. Let it be your breath. 
your life. Oh, give me strength. Let's just pray in the next 15 seconds. Say, Lord, strength. The Bible says, For the grace of God that appeared to all men has given us power to say no to all form of ungodliness. I want to announce to you that there is, there is this power available in this house. The power to give you grace to say no.